Hey, algebra students, let's take a look at how the formula sheet can also help us with some data analysis problems that might show up on the GED math test. So directions say you may use a calculator in the GED formula sheet for any of the following. If you had these problems on the math test, you would have those two tools, the calculator and the GED formula sheet. If for some reason you had something like this on science or social studies, which can also happen, you would have the calculator, but in in that case, you would not have the formula sheet. So this is good uh, review of how to use the formula sheet, but it's also a nice little sneak peek of how to do these things without that sheet. So first example, a data set consists of the values 15, 25, 23, 19, and an unknown value V. This is why it's coming up in algebra. Here we go, an unknown value V. If V is the median of the set, okay, we know something about V, it's the median. Which of the following could be the value of V? So there's this number, it's V, it's in this set of numbers, and we know something about it. We know it's the median, but maybe we don't know what the median is. So go hit up the formula sheet. There's info about that on there. Directly underneath the geometry formulas on the GED formula sheet, are the data formulas. But interesting enough, if you look at the two data formulas for mean and median, you're gonna notice that uh, they don't actually give it to you in formula form. They give you some verbal directions. Same idea. I mean, formulas are just directions, relationships written in the language of algebra. This here is written in English. But we were talking that that value was the median. So let's see what it has to say about median. Median is the middle value in an odd number of ordered values of a data set, or the mean of the two middle values in an even number of ordered values in the data set. So if that seems like wordy and confusing, go back and look at the example that we did in the advanced level practice of lesson 1.5 because I went into a lot of detail. But basically what you really need to know is that the median is the middle of an ordered list. So if you put the numbers in order and you get to the direct center, that's the median. So let's apply that now to this particular problem. We said the median is the middle most number in an ordered set. So let's go ahead and put these numbers in order. So we have 15, that's the smallest number I see. Next smallest number I see is 19. And then I see 23. And then I see 25. And you might say to me, well, Kate, this is an even number of values in this data set. There's four of them. And so the middle number is not totally clear. And so I must have to add these two together and divide by two to find the answer. That's what most students would do. They would go, okay, 19 plus 20. This is wrong, by the way. In fact, I should write it in red. And then they would just say fraction bar. We'll add our 19 and our 23. That was the second half of the information about median. And then divide by two. And there you go. And they tell me, oh, it must be 21. And I say that what you got fooled with is not the concept of median or even what to do when median comes up. What you got fooled by was the close reading skills. You didn't account for the missing value. Like you might not know what V is, the median, but it does exist. It is part of this set. It should be in your ordered list. Let's say that again. V is a number that's part of this set. It better be in your numbered list. Now you say, Kate, I don't know what V is. How am I supposed to put V in my ordered list? Well, no, you don't know what V is, but you know where V is. Huh? Look at what it says. It says V is the median of the set. Where do you find the median? Directly in the middle. And so V, whatever it is, is right here. So all I know is that V is somewhere between 19 and 23. I don't know if he's perfectly halfway between. So don't make that assumption. You know, there's a lot of numbers that could be fitting in there. In fact, it could be another 19. It could be 20. It could be 21. It could be 22. It could be 23. Any one of those numbers would have gotten put in that spot. 
And so this is a tricky example. It doesn't have to be the perfect middle. It just has to be but the number that in the list was in the middle of 19 and 23. And so therefore, I'm going to have to go ahead and say all of the above. If you're still not tracking with me, like if you're tracking with me, just go on to the next example. But for those of you who are like, Kate, that does not make sense. I'm just going to show you what I mean by plugging in each of those numbers. You could have had... 15, 19, had VB19, 23, and 25, and it would still have been in the middle. Same thing with the other two options. 21 is also between 19 and 23, and so is 22. So all of those are possible options. But what if, for example, it had 18 as a selection? Now, 18 would not have worked because it doesn't make any sense to put 18 in the middle of the list. Now, my numbers are not ordered. 18 could not have been the median of the set, but 19, 21, 22, they all could be. So nice. Whew, tricky. Whew. There's a reason why I put this in the advanced level practice. I don't actually expect that it'll get this hard on the GED test. Uh, they tend to go a little simpler on median where you just like find it. But what I wanted to develop here was those close reading skills, those really understanding what median means skills, instead of just like memorizing some steps, which you guys are usually guilty of. And then again, that kind of like algebraic reasoning, um, that's what you guys lack. And that's really what you need for this test. Let's look at the next example. A data set consists of the values 107, 94, 111, 105, and an unknown value K. If the mean of the data set is 106, what is the value of K? Now, this is a very common GED example. If the first one was maybe flexing some GED skills without necessarily being GED test style, this one is GED test style. And it could happen on your math or even more frequently it could happen on your science where you know the mean, also called the average, and you know some of the items in your data set, but you're missing another one. If you had it, had it on the science, you wouldn't have the formula sheet, but we're doing math right now, so we have it. So let's go take a look at it and see if it can clue us in uh, so that we'll be prepped for both of those tests. All right, so this time we know the mean. And what does our formula sheet tell us about the mean? I'm going to write it down. I want you to write this on your formula sheet if it's not already there, because this is what's going to help me to write this in the language of algebra. It's understanding this, okay? So it says mean. I'm just going to use a letter M. That's not actually the letter that they usually use in your college classes. I think you'll learn to use X bar or something. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm just going to use it because you guys know what I'm talking about. So mean is equal to the total of the values of the data set. So you're gonna to total up the data divided by, please use a fraction bar. This is one of those cases where if you're the student who doesn't use the fraction bar, you can actually get a wrong answer. It's because I wanna divide the whole total, not just one number, the whole total, I'm gonna to need to use a fraction bar. So total divided by the number of elements in the data set how many pieces of data you have. So you'll take the total of all the data and then you'll divide by the number of pieces of data. All right, now that we know that, let's go back and look at our example. So if our mean is equal to the total of all the items in the data set divided by the number of items in the data set, let's do that. Let's total first. We have what in the data set? We have 107 and we're gonna total. So I'll go ahead and add. When you just have a bunch of different numbers that aren't the same, right? We total by adding. I'm only gonna multiply if I have repeated numbers, which I don't. I'm gonna add 111. I'm gonna add 105. And don't forget this, an unknown value K. Now you say, Kate, how can I add in a number? I don't know you crazy woman. And I say, that's algebra. I've been teaching you to write in the language of algebra. What do you do when you don't know the number? You write a letter. So I'm going to total that. I'm going to add in K as well. Can I do that? Yes, you can do that. Legit. Okay. You don't know what the number is. Just put them where you would have put them, but call them a letter. Okay. Now that whole total, and this is why I want a fraction bar, whole total is supposed to be divided by the number of items in the data set. Another common error 
again, is to divide by four because people are like, hey, it's the number of numbers. A lot of people memorize mean as the number of numbers and there's four numbers. It's not the number of numbers, you guys. It's the number of items in the data set. And depending on what information they give us, that might not be the same as the number of numbers. It's a little weird to think about. But our data set doesn't just have four numbers in it. Even though our problem has four, our data set has five, right? There's that unknown number K. And so I'm gonna be dividing this whole thing by five. So now this looks a little confusing because of the two equal signs. I just wrote this total over number to help you get started, but I think I'll erase it now so it won't get in my way and confuse me as I try to solve. And I will just write it. Well, you know what? I don't even need to write an M. How come? Because I know what the mean is. Mm, good point, Kate. The mean is 106. So instead of writing the M for mystery mean, I'm going to write 106 because it's a known value. Now here's another place students get stuck. I mean, really, really stuck. This looks so ugly, Kate. There's no way. You never taught me to do algebra like this. I hate it. I hate you. I hate math class. All the things you hate. And I'm like, you guys, you guys, you guys, remember the wisdom principle. If there's something you can simplify, do it. And it might make it easier here to solve for K. That is the case here. This is just a list of numbers adding. And no, I can't add in K because I don't know what he is, but I could add up all the other numbers and make this sucker a lot simpler. Let's do it. So 107 plus 94 plus 111 plus 105 gives me 417. So that whole big ugly portion came to 417. And now that that's a little simpler and I drop down the rest of the expression on the right-hand side, so plus K and divided by five, and I drop down the expression on the left-hand side, now I can see it's just a two-step equation to solve. A lot of students will say, well, Kate, we're solving an equation now. You told me when we're solving equations, we're going to work the order of operations backwards. So we should move away anything adding or subtracting. So I think I'll subtract the 417. And then I say to you, you forgot something. You forgot about groupings. You leave groups until last when you're solving. And K is in a group, right? He's at the top of the fraction with 417. He's grouped up there with 417. So let's get rid of any numbers that are outside of the grouping first. Five is outside of the grouping, so I want to get rid of it. Well, what's five doing with that whole group? That long fraction bar says that that five is dividing. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to multiply. And remember, multiplication passes out so that I put that entire side in parentheses. And I'm going to multiply that entire side by five. I'm going to do the same on the left-hand side to keep my balance. I'm going to multiply the entire side by five. It's only one number on that. So it's kind of silly to talk about it as an entire side, but it's not always like that. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we'll do our five times 106 to get the new simplified expression on the left-hand side, 530. And that's going to be equivalent to whatever I get on the right-hand side. Again, breathe through this, you guys. Remember what you were doing. Don't get lost in memorized steps. You were telling me that dividing the group by five and multiplying the group by five are opposites, so they should cancel. You just got rid of that divide five and that multiply five. And so all you have left now is that 417 plus K, and it's freed from its grouping, right? It's no longer even in that fraction. And so now I can get rid of the 417. That is a term. So I move it through addition or subtraction. That just means it's adding or subtracting with K. I want it to zero out. So I subtract it away. Do the same thing to the other side. That cancels out. And I just have nothing plus K or K. And I can do this final step in my calculator. I mean, I really recommend you do because you're going to be thinking so hard about everything else. It would be so silly to make a dumb error on subtraction. And I see that K that missing value has to be 113. Now, good idea. This was a complex example. Challenge level, a lot of students wouldn't feel up to it because you have to write your own algebraic equation based on understanding some words on the formula sheet. But the nice thing is, if you get an answer, you can check it. Or if this would have been multiple choices, you can check it. So let me just show you what I mean. 
I'm going to plug that in like it's one of the numbers in the data set and see if it gives me a mean of 106, okay? So if that unknown value K really is 113, then I should be able to total this list of numbers, 107 plus 94 plus 111 plus 105 plus this value that I'm saying K is, I say K is 113 and I need to total it. So I'm going to press enter you guys. There's the total. And then I should be able to divide that by how many numbers is that in the data set? Five. Does it give me a mean of 106? It does. So I check my work backwards with the thing I better understand finding mean. And I can see that my work checks. Mm, tricky, tricky. Wow. Challenge mode. <laughs> I love to do these kinds of problems with you guys because I recognize that advanced level students, usually you don't need what, more than one unit. You can do most every problem on the GED using your algebra skills. And so nice to tackle these examples with that formula sheet. All right, you guys, happy learning.